Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend uh, update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing uh, well. Uh, first and foremost, I want to uh, really, really thank, uh, I, I keep on getting this question five, six, seven times a week from, from ran random people and they keep on asking, um, are options good you know with the ps60 theory and uh, if you if you think about that question if you think about the the stocks especially that i trade uh the high beta names you know they provide the biggest average to range uh in the markets right amazon uh, tesla netflix um you know facebook apple boeing so forth and so on so absolutely i, I would say probably uh there's a 55 45 split uh one way or another in the webinar options versus um options versus equity traders, I trade equity. Um, but I, I, I wanna thank, you know, I wanna thank, uh, we had uh, an introductory, specifically an introductory to uh, options trader trading via the PS60 theory. And I just wanna thank, uh, number one, Kenyon uh, for hosting it, did a fantastic job. Alex uh, and Kyler kind of the backbone of, of the whole event. And I, I wanna thank our panelists. Um, Sam and Larry and Maje and Lozanjo and Matthew taking time out. Uh, they all have different levels of experience, uh, trading options, um, different levels of their careers, different account sizes. But I, I want to thank them very, very much for, you know, sharing, uh, sharing their time. Okay. Sharing their time and experiences specifically, uh, trading options via, uh, the PS 60 theories, a great event yesterday. Uh, I pretty much sat back, relaxed, uh, took down a lot of notes. I, I think in trading, you know, once you start getting complacent and once you start believing that you can just get by on your past performance, okay, or uh, years in this business, this is when you start losing your edge. And it's very, very important. I think that uh, not only that myself got a little bit of a different perspective of what they talk about, but especially a lot of the newer traders who's just started trading options uh, via these pivots, they really got an understanding what they look for. Um, video should be out. Uh, we haven't figured out if we want to put it out on YouTube yet, but um, the video should be out uh, in the next day or so uh, to everybody else. Should give you guys a good amount of value, especially for you guys, first time traders uh, of options. This is a very uh, very basic understanding of what these guys are thinking about when they're about to get a pivot. Uh, when they're about to look for an expanded measured potential range uh, versus uh, a narrower cash flow range. Should you take the trade? Shouldn't you take the trade? Your position size, whatever the case may be. So uh, it was pretty cool. It was about two hours and it should be uh, available in the next uh, day or so. So thank you very, very much. Uh, big winners this week, right? Big winners of this week was the flight crew of SpaceX. Okay. Uh, first time in 10 years, somebody went out of this world, right? Somebody went out of this world. It was delayed last week via uh, weather. And this week they finally, it was actually a really, really cool thing. I was watching it on uh, Twitter. Uh, very, very cool. It was a very proud moment uh, just for society. But they were the big winners. Leaving Earth, man, there's nothing good here. There's really nothing good here. 2020, again, every single time you think, well, it couldn't get worse. This is the bottom. Well, no, it's not the bottom. Uh, as everybody saw in the last week or so, you know, basically a murder. I mean, basically a murder um, of, an, of, a, of, a, of a man uh, by the police. And, um, you know, the ramifications was just enough is enough, right? Just tremendous, aggressive, uh, protesting, uh, some peaceful, okay, some not. Okay, that's the best way I could say it. Um, and it's just a sad, you know, just, we, it's, it's, a, it's a sad day for kind of mankind that, you know, that we live... Uh, in a world that is so, um, so aggressive, man. It just, I think that's the best way of saying without, you know, without putting, you know, going into details. It's just a sad world. And, and, and I think, again, uh, the only thing you can do is just pray. I mean, that's it. Just pray and have faith in, you know, human beings. But, you know, again, we, you know, I, this is why I don't watch the news. I started watching it this weekend. It's just, 
just absolutely terrible. So hopefully, uh, say, I mean, the only thing to do is just say a prayer for humanity. That's it. Say a prayer for humanity. And hopefully, you know, God will, you know, will help us out, right? Just like the way uh, he or she, depending on who you believe God is, uh, or it, or whatever case it is. Uh, but more important, just again, just try to love each other, man. You know, there, there's incredible amount of injustice in this world, and we saw this. But, you know, robbing a Louis Vuitton, you know, kicking in the doors of the Christian Dior... <laughs> Is that really the best way, uh, you know, to, to rectify things? You know, whatever. So it is what it is. So uh, let's talk about the markets. Um, big winners again are the bulls. Okay, I, you, you saw from the trading aspect of this week that even though the market put up a phenomenal number on the scoreboard, you saw a three percent rise in the S and P five hundred. You see nearly a four percent rise. In the Dow Jones, if you look at the, the the actual value of the market, especially from the technology side or the beta side, um, the value is actually to the downside pretty much every single day. No matter how uh, strong the market was, we saw a lot of really good solid days to the downside, especially uh, that day. I think it was Tuesday into Wednesday that we talked about. Uh, that was I was a hundred percent sell bias. So we had that really really aggressive move to the downside. Uh, which turned out to be a very, very good day. Uh, but again, if you look at the scoreboard and see exactly uh, what the market did this week, was actually is phenomenal. Again, if you go by the numbers, just sheer numbers, 40 million unemployment. Uh, COVID is almost like taking a backseat to actually what's going on in the protests of what we've seen in the last several days. But if you look where we are, okay, the S&P on the March lows was 2191. Okay, again, if you told me, you know, we are pretty much in June 1st and we're over the 200 day moving average, which is a huge uh, technical level of the bulls uh, reclaimed. Uh, and now we're, you know, looking to start filling in this channel uh, up to the 3200 area. It's absolutely remarkable. And again, it's very, very tough to uh, make a bear case. Uh, again, you know, the, the whole, as we you know, lovingly joke around, the whole George Costanza market that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. That's why, again, I'm not trying to uh, for, you know, predict the market, what's going to happen three days from now. I'm just literally taking day by day, the day's close, the day's sentiment, uh, the day's technical area of who has control of supply and demand, and making, um, you know, making a, a, a kind of a judgment call for the next day, and that's it. And that's and again, you can you cannot afford, um, you cannot really afford to put yourself in a position that you are betting a month out. Man, we, we the market is so uncertain right now, uh, in both sides. You know, both sides with all the macro news and all the political news, uh, and all obviously the protests and COVID and everything else. You you can't afford to believe that you can potentially predict what's going to happen a week from now. Okay, I'm literally going day by day. I mean, if if you if you asked me at two forty five, right? I logged off around a quarter to three uh, yesterday, right? Um, and if you asked me what I thought was going to happen Monday based on what we saw on Friday's action. You know, very, very stale market. Uh, you had, you know, beta not participating, testing the bottom of the ranges the whole day. And I said to myself, well, you know, if 90, you know, gun to my head, Monday, you know, we're gonna start going lower. And then Trump came on, right? Trump came on uh, talking about, you know, China's still on. Again, again, nothing really materialistically has changed uh, between two and a half years ago and where we are right now. Uh, base China. It's all basically on the next headline, right? We're only as good as the next headline. And the Dow, you know, came back from a 250 point uh, deficit. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 uh, rallied, uh, the, you know, NASDAQ, the, uh, the composite rallied 120 points. And we literally went from, hey, Amazon is a short for Monday. Tesla is a short for Monday. Netflix is a short for Monday. Never rally, right? Alibaba, oh my God, this China news is going to hit Alibaba. That's going to be a you know, confirmation for Monday. And you look up, you know, you look up 45 minutes later, and we literally went from um, septic tank, right, to swimming in gold. And that's where the bulls came in, and this is where the bulls uh, did a fantastic job. So if you look at the individual closes, right, we had Amazon literally, uh, you know, literally a day away from confirming this downside channel to start retesting this bottom channel to reclaiming the five-day moving average, 
incredibly bullish. Netflix that couldn't rally for 85-90% no, of the days yesterday is literally one day away from reclaiming the five-day moving average. You had Tesla that's, got, that's gotten rejected for the last month, literally for the last month that kept on getting rejected over and over and over again into supply wake up and reclaim this whole channel here and you can go on from you know many of these stocks so the bulls did a fantastic job uh i think the cues not out of the woods just yet but i think the cues are a day away to kind of reclaiming this linear regression line uh and start moving higher and again the world is literally collapsing around us uh the astronauts right now they are in spacex and space doing god knows but again they are in a much better place than society is, and hopefully everything uh, will fix itself. So uh, solid week, uh, no complaints, uh, really, really solid week. Uh, very aggressive, especially to the downside. Friday uh, after 3 o'clock showed the most uh, aggressive channel in the whole week, despite uh, putting up a very, very impressive number uh, on the scoreboard for the week. Again, nearly 4% move in the Dow Jones, 3% plus uh, in the S&P 500 and a little bit less than 2% on the Qs, but, but again, the, the NASDAQ, that last jolt uh, of the day, basically Friday, put up its scoreboard uh, in, in, in total for the week. So I, I think going into this week, again, one day at a time, okay, uh, you know, one day at a time based on technical analysis. Again, I'm not smart enough to figure out what the hell is going to happen on Tuesday. It, it's really amazing. Again, you can have a sense uh, have an opinion again the fact that the s p will use the spies uh, as kind of a barometer here but the fact the longer the s p 500 stays and builds above the 200 day moving average the higher probability again we go to this 319 or 3190 3200 level uh on uh the s p so uh no complaints right no complaints uh friday again uh, you know again just just taking it pivot by pivot uh, trade by trade, uh, a lot of the you know a lot of the day was very uh, you know very very stuck in, in the mud. But again, uh, this is why patience is an incredibly uh, important level, right? Important important area of the market. Um, I believe that a lot of traders use the word patience is kind of like an afterthought, right? They use the word, but they really don't practice it. Uh, but again, Friday did prove just like every other day proves if you've been trading for a long long time let the game come to you okay you don't need to chase the game okay let the game come to you it's all about patience it's all about believing that value is much more important than any uh, individual trade and the most important part is again stay in the game until moses parts the red sea and then you go through so you can see kind of the the thought process I had for, you know, for, for Friday morning, the only long that I really liked was Roku. I mean, everything else, if you look at, excuse me, there was actually ZS and uh, ZM as well. Um, but Roku initially was the only long I liked. If you look at every single pivot initially, I liked it everything to the downside because everything materialistically was telling us the market can't rally. The market is not rallying. Every time we do rally, we get stuffed into supplies, especially in the technology names, and then they get stuffed and they go lower. And that, that was kind of the mantra on this short week that we saw every single day. And that's why I kept on saying the value is constantly to the downside. Again, market turns on a dime. You can't stay you know, painted into a corner and you have to kind of adjust. So uh, let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Uh, 111 needs to build um, on Roku. Uh, here is the pivot on Roku. So here is the 111. Excuse me, let me show you the 60 minute chart. So here is the 111 right here. So here is the whole area. Uh, 1084 was the high here. Uh, 111 is the high here. So again, it got above uh, it got above the 11 area. Again, not a big move. That's the whole point. Not a big move. Uh, it went up, you know, went up a buck and change, and then everything else started selling off. I got, obviously, Roku is not going to be any different than anything else. So, again, this is why you always, uh, when you're putting on a position, especially when you're trading pivots, you, you know, you know the volume is going to come in because, again, these are the arbitrary areas uh, that have been um, the darling of the algorithms. That's why you're able to get such a fast move in such a short period of time, because that's where the volume should kick in. Um, so uh, Roku, you know, went up a dollar. Again, always take profits on every single trade, scale on the way out. 
Uh, obviously, once you get cash flow, whether you're trading options, whether you're trading uh, equity, always use break even as your stop. Again, safety first, and obviously it sold off right after that. It actually went down all the way down to one, uh, 107 from 112. So you can see how aggressive uh, some of these pulls were. Um, Netflix again, you know, here is you know here is an area I was watching 410. If it builds below, it can flush. Obviously, never got there, but again, I was watching for that flush. Uh, Amazon, if it builds below 23.77, it can flush. And again, it felt like it was about to do that for 90% of the day. Obviously, you don't anticipate, you wait for confirmation. Never did that. I was watching for beyond to the downside as well 120, 116 levels. Downside, never confirmed. Alibaba, if it builds below, can flush. It got literally right to that area, traded right to 96.70. Obviously, uh, you know, put in the double, double bottom and then rallied again. Uh, shop, again, was waiting for the downside, obviously never got there. Uh, Boeing did flush, okay? Boeing did flush here. Uh, for all you guys who did catch the trade, it was too fast for me. Uh, I blinked and I missed the trade. Uh, Boeing, 146.85, if it builds below, can flush. So here is Boeing uh, pre-market, right? So we talked about this whole area here, uh, this 147 area here, and it put in a low here of 146.85. Uh, and I said, you know, I said, you know, look, this is the area, if it builds below, uh, can flush and you know got destroyed. You know got really really hit hard, uh, really really hit hard. It went all the way down to the 143 area. If you did catch a good job, I missed it. It was just way too fast for me, and I just didn't want to chase. Um, I didn't want to chase it down. Uh, ZS was a really really strong move. You started seeing uh, pretty. You know, first of all, we started seeing the 80 weekly call buyers. Uh, from Thursday into Friday, um, and they got it right. They definitely got it right. Uh, it gapped up uh, 9150, 92. It needs to build for a possible move to 96. Uh, this was actually a really big move. So here was the 9150, 92, and the stock exploded. It went all the way to uh, the 98 area. We saw a bunch of hundred calls uh, coming in uh, for this week's uh, upcoming up weekly. So big, big, strong move on ZS. Um, I didn't watch VMware. I forgot. I totally forgot about it. 156 rejected twice needs to build. So this is the first time I'm actually watching. I have no idea what this, what this thing did. Uh, 156. It looks like it went to 157. So I, I just did, I wasn't even paying attention to this thing. Um, ZM was a nice move again. Uh, 169.75, 170 uh, needs to build. So here is 169, 170, right? 169, 170, and just exploded. Just absolutely exploded. Huge move here. Uh, took out the 52-week highs after the close, so monster, monster move. Uh, traded up to the 180s uh, after hours, uh, big move on ZM. And again, exploded, just always take money on the way up. We, you just don't know, uh, you just don't know uh, when stocks are going to, uh, stocks are going to um, uh, stop, so always take money along the way. So ZS exploding, uh, ZM exploding, uh, too low. Uh, 199. Um, you know, I still like this area here. It's getting very, very tight. It didn't trigger on Friday, but you can see how tight this whole range here on Tulo. Uh, so I still like it. I still, still like it. And then I said, you know, and everything kind of stopped, right? After that, everything kind of stopped. And I said, hey, look, let's just sit tight. You know, sit tight. Everything's in the middle of the ranges. It's Friday. Uh, it was solid action all week. Again, you don't need to recreate the wheel. We trade because the, we need value, not because the market's open. And you know, then I started putting in you know the, the stock that again, I, again, is there anything better to say about the stock? So Tesla, again, we talked about in nausea, this 835 level, uh, macro level. Uh, but I said, look, here's the sneaky area, 822, 823, sneaky, 825, yesterday's highs. Did I think it was going to test 835 on Friday? I, I absolutely did not. Okay. Um, I did not, but Hey, again, this is why it's the best stock ever. So here was Tesla. Um, I flipped it earlier in the day on the really, really sneaky, sneaky pivot from uh, 818 to 820, but I did not anticipate an 835 move. So when this whole range kicked in, right, this whole range here kicked in, uh, 822, 823, here's the 825, here was the 835, this month worth of range, okay, and the stock absolutely exploded after the close, it went, you know, as high as the 843, and now, and I said this obviously joking around, I said unless there is uh, an arrest for Elon Musk for a triple homicide over the weekend, 
again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, I, again, I know a lot of you guys are along this thing over the weekend. Um, again, we should test 860. Okay, we should test 860. Uh, we started seeing um, some 900 buyers come in, some 920 buyers, obviously some gr aggressive thousand buyers come in as well. Uh, but again, got to watch this thing opening range highs uh, tomorrow. If you're not long for a possible initial push uh, to this 858, 860 level. Uh, so again, looks really, really good. If there's a down opening, uh, there's a down opening that this is a, a hundred star buy at the rising uh, 60 minutes su su uh, support if it gets there. But other than that, I, you know, I'm very, very bullish on uh, Tesla. So big, big move, huge, huge move on Tesla. I know a lot of you guys uh, caught this thing really, really well. So great job there. Uh, yeah, so again, 825 has to reclaim. The stock just exploded from 825, it ran up 10 points into the close. And then what are you going to say? 835, you know, Tesla, right? Tesla. Uh, I, again, I know some of you guys caught some ridiculous, I mean, uh, Guantum, congrats. I mean, my man caught 735% move on his Tesla calls in the last candle. And I say this jokingly. When is 200% not enough? When is 500% not enough? All jokes aside, congratulations. So I, I got a lot of emails, a lot of text messages, a lot of people caught uh, Tesla into that last channel uh, very, very aggressively. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So, you know, crazy, crazy way uh, to end the week. And, and just like that, like the, like, the, like the Drake record says, the market went from zero to 100 real quick. So uh, going into this week, again, you have to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt, uh, spies again uh, over the 200-day moving average, super bullish. Uh, the diamonds, uh, the diamonds, uh, again, not there just yet, but very, very close to reclaiming uh, the 200-day. The Qs, you know, Qs just one more day. Just we, we need to reclaim this, need to reclaim this linear regression line right here around, around the 233 and a half on the close. So that's very, very bullish. And now, you know, you start looking at all these different stocks that look like death. Now they just need to claim, reclaim the five day. If you guys remember, they're in the middle of the week to the early part of the week. I was shorting all these stocks, and all these setups below the five day moving average, right? So if they're breaking below the five day, they're going to go lower. So again, look at, look at beyond, right? If it confirms the five day, it should go higher. If Amazon confirms the five day, it should go higher. If Netflix confirms the five day, should go higher and on and on and on and on. So guys, please love each other, man. We only have one life. I, I promise you there is no do-over, okay? Uh, we have to uh, live in a world that we coexist, okay? It's not about race. It's not about economic status. It's about just being a human being. That's it, man. Just love each other. I mean, it's not so hard to really understand that concept. Uh, I know we have some work to do. Uh, as a society, as human beings, but we need to set an example for our children, man. Okay, you know, again, people are not born with hate in their in, in their hearts. They're taught that. Okay, it's just these are just the facts. So please love each other. Please love yourself, um, and may God bless you all. Have a great, great remainder of your Sunday, guys, and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.